said a miracle working God. It's a fine thing that people believe in horoscopes and Ouija boards and all kind of foolishness. But they don't believe that God is a miracle worker. Amen. I say God is a miracle worker. Amen. He can do miracles right now in this service. Amen. He wants to do miracles right now in this service. But we've got to have the faith to believe that he's able to do what we need him to do. So I would like to direct your attention to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And I want to be mindful of the hour. I want to be sensitive to the spirit of God. And appreciate the Sunday school lesson. Amen. There's a harvest to be reached. And uh, I appreciate Daryl also making mention that it was a Sunday evening prayer meeting, I believe it was. And Sister Joanna, amen, said, Pastor, can I share something? The Lord has spoke to me and said, they're coming in. And some of you probably didn't think much about what she said, but we're seeing that come to pass. And see, if God says something, it's going to happen. It will happen. Now, when and how, that, that's up to him. But I thank the Lord that they're coming in. And he, she said they're not going to look like us. They're not going to talk like us. Amen. And this is what church is all about. This is what the kingdom of God is all about. It's about people of all walks of life. Amen. Of all nationalities. Amen. You see, in heaven, there's not going to be, amen, a racial divide. Right. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I always say, people say, I want to go to heaven, but uh, there's some things we got to get right down here if we're going to go over there. Amen. 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 There won't be prejudice and racism, and division in heaven. Right. Amen. We're going to worship one God. Amen. Right. Amen. And his name is Jesus. If you stand, please, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Amen. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18. The Apostle Paul is writing and he begins on this note. He says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved is the power of God. Verse 19, for it is written. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Verse 20, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Verse 21, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, for it pleased God. Notice that it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. In verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Father, we're grateful for the word of God. I pray and plead the blood of Jesus over this atmosphere. Your word has never come back void. Let the word of God go forth and let it minister. Let it speak to the hearts and the minds of the people of God. Give us an ear to hear what the spirit is saying. We pray and thank you in advance, God, that the word go forth and fall on good ground and we will receive it. And we will thank you for it. In the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ, why don't you give the Lord another hand clap of praise in your hands. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to also direct your attention to the book of Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 the again apostle Paul who wrote Romans the same writer of the book of Corinthians In Romans chapter 1 verse 16 Paul says for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power 
of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm often interested in other translations and particularly sometimes I will reference the Amplified or the Amplified Classic or Complete Translation. In the Amplified Version it says this in Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, good news of Christ, for it is God's power working unto salvation for the deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and a confident, confident surrender and firm reliance to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Paul was a very anointed man of God, a very powerful man of God that was used to write more books within the New Testament than any other writer. Paul's life was transformed by the power of God. What a powerful testimony we saw for many of us that were here to see Daryl when he first came in and to see what the power of God can do in a person's life. I'm so glad that God changed me. Anybody glad that he changed you? Amen. I'm so glad I don't do what I used to do. Amen. I'm so glad I don't go where I used to go. Amen. So glad I don't listen to what I used to listen to. Amen. But God's power can change you. Amen. And when God changes our life, he changes it for the better. I can honestly say that my life has been changed for the better. Amen. And if it had not been for God changing my life, I would still be doing the same old things that I used to do. That's right. I'm so glad that I can honestly testify and tell you that God can save a drug addict. That's right. He can deliver you from alcohol, right. cocaine, marijuana. Right. Amen. All those things that we find ourselves addicted to. Right. Amen. I went to a meeting one night. And my heart went right. But oh, something got a hold of me. Uh, I, I look back over those moments. I remember that night when I went into that apostolic church. My life wasn't right. I was messed up. Amen. I mean, messed up. Amen. From the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, I was messed up. But I went, thank God, to that apostolic church. Amen. And my life was changed. Amen. God can change you. Amen. I can say he can deliver you and heal you. Amen. The people are saying to you, your life, not gonna, your life is not going to amount to much. Amen. God had different plans for my life. And I thank the Lord. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we read a portion of Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. And in order to fully grasp the words of the Apostle Paul and the significance of this letter, we need to understand a little bit about Corinth. You see, Corinth was the capital city, amen, of a particular city where it was located at the southern tip of Greece. And the city of Corinth was located on a narrow strip of land that looked much like an island. And it having a, a harbor on the east side and it had a harbor on the west side. And Corinth was a heavily populated city. It was a heavily populated city with people from all walks of life. In Corinth, you had the Greeks. In Corinth, you had the Jews. In Corinth, you had the Ethiopians or the Egyptians. And in other nationalities, all kinds of nationalities of people were living in Corinth. And, and, and due to its location, Corinth was a strategic shipping center for commerce. And being a culturally diverse city with, with, with very populated people and with a lot of commerce, one can imagine with all these different types of people, this just different nationalities. It, it was like a metropolitan city. And you can only imagine the lifestyle that many begin to adopt to. 
You see, we got to be very careful that we don't just adopt the lifestyle to anything that comes about. Amen. Amen. I mean, in this city, you, you got to understand immorality was so prevalent in Corinth that the name of the city became a byword for evil and immoral living. And this seemed to be a very unlikely place for a church to grow and to prosper. But Paul knew the significance. He knew the potential of Corinth. And he knew a lot about the power of God. And when you read Corinthians, after his words of greeting, Paul spoke to the need for unity in the church. And you find that when you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and you get to verses 10 through 13, he opens, he greets the people, but then he, he, he addresses now the need for unity. And as you continue and you look at the text that we read in verses 18 through 25, Paul now is shifting his focus. And he shifts his focus to the significance of the gospel. And so therefore, I, I, I take a thought today that I want to preach from. And my thought simply is this, the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel. You see, Paul, in this epistle, he desired to emphasize the great importance of the gospel. He, he wanted to emphasize to the people that there was power in the word of God. Amen. And he wanted them to understand that the power of God had the ability to transform sinners' lives. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ is so powerful. It is a powerful message that thousands of years ago when it was first preached, it is still as powerful today. That's right. Amen. Amen. It is still as powerful today Amen. as it was first preached thousands of years ago. Amen. And ever since Jesus rose from the dead, different people have responded differently to the preaching of the cross. It's amazing how people respond to preaching. It's amazing how people respond to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Some reject the gospel. While others receive it. Amen. We, we live in an hour where people are rejecting the word of God. Amen. And it's a dangerous place to reject the word of God. The word of God is life changing. That, that's why the enemy in the forces of darkness does not want you obeying the word of God. Amen. The devil will do everything in his power. To keep the word of God out of your life. Right. To keep the word of God out of your home. Yes. Right. To keep the word of God out of your marriage. Yes. To keep the word of God out of your finances. Yes. To keep the word of God out of your life. You ever notice why, when you think about it, when, when the school system allowed the children to pray in the school, when, the, when they allowed the children to read the Bible in school, amen, it seemed like the school system was so much better. But the moment we take God out of the equation, then the minute we take God out of the school system, you take prayer out of the school, you take the Bible out of the school. You, you, when, when you take God out of your life, you are asking for trouble. Amen. Heaven and earth was founded on the word of God. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. Amen. We need the word of God. Amen. And I've come to tell you, people need to stop all this foolishness of rejecting the word of God. Amen. The word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. The word of God will lead you. It will guide you. It will direct you. The word of God will tell you when to stop, when to go, when to turn. Amen. The word of God will give you answers to everything you need for in life. Amen. 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 People need to stop rejecting the word of God. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad I've made up my mind. I'm going to receive it. Amen. 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 I can honestly tell you the word of God has blessed my family. Amen. I, I said the word of God has blessed my family. Yes, 
Amen. The word of God has blessed my wife and I. The word of God has blessed my son and my daughter-in-law. Amen. The word of God is a powerful thing. Amen. Don't just put the word of God in your car and let all the sun beam down on it and shrink it up. Amen. And make it look like a book that, that is not a book. Amen. We, we need the word of God, church. Yeah, I said we need the word of God. Yeah, I said we need the word of God. Amen. And so Paul, when he understood that there was an, uh, an opposing of different opinions, people were accepting the word of God. People were rejecting the word of God. And, and so Paul responded to this by verse 18 saying, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. People are perishing because they are rejecting the word of God. Why is it we believe everything else, but we don't want to believe the word of God? Right. I mean, people come out today and come out with these new ideals, these new beliefs, these new teachings, and, and, and people jump on it like uh, hook, line, and sinker. Right. Yeah. Amen. H having verified the facts. I, I mean, some of you, you, you believe, amen, what you see on TV and internet more than you believe the word of God. Right. Amen. 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 But we got to believe God's word. Amen. 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 And so Paul says this. Now, this word foolishness, this word foolishness, it comes from the Greek word Maria. And this word Maria means foolish, stupid, or unintelligent. And it describes unacceptable behavior, thought, or speech. And from this Greek word, Maria, where we get this word foolish, this word Maria is derived from the word moron. <laughs> Amen. And you see, what Paul was trying to help them understand is that many of the Greeks in the Romans mindset in Corinth, it, they had this mindset that, that if you're going to believe in Jesus Christ, and you're going to believe in the cross as the only way to salvation. You, you, you believe in like, like a moron. He was trying to help them understand to get in that kind of mindset. It's like acting like a moron. To believe that Jesus, because see some of them didn't believe that Jesus Christ was the only way to salvation. We're living in an hour right now. That people do not believe that the only way to salvation is Jesus Christ. Right. There is no other way to be saved right. than Jesus Christ. Right. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Right. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right. Amen. Right. And so there was a belief system that was arising up in the church. It was a belief system because, see, you had all these different people coming from all these different walks of life. You had the Greeks, you had the Jews, you had the Egyptians, and you had all these people that brought all this bondage with them into the church. All this belief system that, that, that they thought was right. Sometimes when you come to God, you got to debunk and get rid of all your philosophies. Right. You, you got to debunk and get rid of all this stuff that you were taught that is contrary to the word of God. Amen. See, sometimes we come to God with a bunch of baggage and junk and philosophy and teaching that, that is unscriptural. That's right. That has nothing to do with the word of God. Amen. 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 The Bible says, Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. There's only one God. There's not three gods. There's not two gods. There's not four gods. There's one God. And his name is Jesus. And so Paul was preaching this and he's trying to help the people understand, don't get caught up in believing that there's other ways to salvation. Amen. 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 For many of these Greeks and these Romans, amen, the, to have this kind of mindset, it, it, it was like you have a narrow mindset to believe and have behavior and, and think that there's no way other to be saved but to, to, to believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the answer. Right. The answer that our world needs is not a political figure. Right. I, I know we get our hopes in political parties and political, excuse me, political figures, and, and I'm not knocking all of that, but the answer is Jesus. 
right. Amen. The answer to your home, the answer to your marriage, the answer to your relationship is Jesus. Amen. Amen. And, and, and sometimes to, in order to really get where God's trying to take us, we got to stop a bunch of foolishness that we're doing in our lives. Amen. 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 Look at your name and say, stop all that foolishness. Amen. 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 Sometimes we do some foolish stuff. That, that just keeps us from being where God's trying to take us. And then once you get saved, God, see, see, that's why some people do not want to get saved. Because they know, once I get saved, God's going to start dealing with me. He's going to start dealing with me about my life and how I'm living my life. And he's going to start changing some things about me. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you. He, I, I came to God with a mindset that was so messed up. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I, I, I didn't come to God, just come out of my mama's womb loving God and loving the church. I didn't know nothing about the church. Right, right. I, little, little did I even want to go to church. <laughs> right. Amen. Amen. But thank God I love coming to church now. Amen. 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 Church is my life. Right. I said church is my life. I love coming to church. I love coming and worshiping God with the people of God. Church is not boring. What's boring is sitting in front of a TV with a remote control playing video games all day. That's boring. That's boring. I remember when I was in the Navy, I was on an aircraft carrier. I'll never forget, you know, aircraft carrier, you got 70,000, oh, excuse me, seven plus thousand people sometimes. And I'll never forget, you, you can see people in the aircraft carrier, you can see them today and not see them six months later. Mm. And I'll forget one time when in the birthing area, we call it a birthing area where people sleep, and, and people were up all night playing video games. Mm. Went through about 11 o'clock, went back through early in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. The same guys were sitting there playing video games. All night. That, that's boring. Yeah. But coming to church, this is not boring. Right. Boy, what Rayshawn was doing up here running and shouting, that's not boring. That's right. Amen. 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 And if you're going to shout, why not shout in church? Right. Right. Amen. I love coming to church. I love worship. I love praise. I love dancing. I love shouting. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This is my life. Yeah. I'd rather be in church. I, I know what it's like to be out in the club. Right, right, right. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I did my clubbing. Right, right. I know what it's like to be out in the club. Right, right. I know what it's like to get cranked up about 11.30 at night. Right. And the day just started. Right. That's, that's, when you come into the light, you realize that's darkness. Woman yeah. liquor store buying liquor. That's, that, that's not life. Boy, I, I'm drinking heavenly wine now. I stay drunk. I just stay drunk on the Holy Ghost now. Amen. I love this thing. I love God. I know what he can do in a person's life. There is power in the gospel. Amen. I come up the gospel can turn a, a drug addict into a deacon. That's right. Can take a pimp to make him a preacher. That's right. Come on now, somebody. Amen. Amen. He can take a heart and make her a, a, a beautiful woman, a, a, a beautiful wife. Right. I'm talking about what the power of God can do. Man, when I came in this thing, my friends thought I had lost my mind. That's right. That's right. Where was that? Do you, you know where Damon at? He in church. Man, ain't no way in the world he in church. <laughs> I'm talking about God can take you from the dope house to the church house. Yeah, right. yeah. That's what he can do. He can revolutionize your life for the better. When you come to God, he'll start dealing with you about a bunch of foolishness you're doing in your life. Yeah. Right. Amen. We got too many people. We, we expecting God to do all this. You see, we already, now I've been talking about this, we in a, we in a season of favor. We're still in this season of praise, but we're in a season of favor. But don't expect God to do all this favor and, and we not changing stuff in our life. Right, right. Amen. God not just going, you just going to say some little magical prayer and then, you know, poof, you know, favor is there. No, God going to deal with you about your life. 
Right. He gonna deal with you about stuff you doing in your life. He gonna help you make some changes in your life. Right. Amen. I said God will help you make some changes in your life. I'm talking about the power of the gospel. Man, this thing works. Amen. I know it works. I said I know it works. Amen. I said I know it works. And I'm looking at some of you and I know what God has done in your life. Amen. I look at Brother Park. He just raised his hand. Came to Zion. Came to Charlotte. Had, had one leg. Praise God. Stand up now, Brother Park. He got two legs now. Praise God. Came in with his leg amputated. Didn't think life was going to get no better. But God said, I'm going to do a miracle for you. I know you ain't got the money to get no amputated leg. I'm going to bless you to get an amputated leg. And now he got a second leg. And that's why I get radical about this thing. Yeah. Amen. I, I get excited about this thing. Yeah. Amen. I, 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 when it comes to God, I'm pumped. When it comes to God, I'm on like spiritual steroids. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. This thing is real. God is real. The power of God is real. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you. I love it. I love God. Yeah. Amen. People get radical and fanatic of all this stuff in the world. Yeah. Confronted with the life changing power of the gospel. A pagan of the time in Corinth. The pagan mindset. Would have forthrightly explained. See it was creeping in that it's stupid. It's unintelligent. And it's unacceptable. To believe that Jesus Christ. Is God. It's unacceptable to believe. That he's the only way to salvation. But I'm here to tell you, there is no other way. There is no other way. I hate to bust people's bubble, but 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 Confucius is not the answer. Elijah Muhammad is not the answer. Come on now, somebody. There's a name that is above every name. The Bible said at the name of Jesus. Devil's tremble. Hallelujah. You want the devil to get out of your life and out of your home and out of your marriage and out of your situation. Start speaking the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, the name of Jesus is powerful. When you start declaring and provoking the name of Jesus, devil's got to shut up. I said, devil's got to shut up in the name of Jesus. I know what I'm talking about. I remember one time in our church, we had a brother, he said, Pastor, I need you to go pray for my daughter. She messed up. And boy, when we got to the house, I realized she was messed up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hey tore up. Messed up with all kind of evil spirits. Yeah. You see, that's why you need to be very careful to what you be dibbling and dabbling into. Because right. see, you can start dibbling and dabbling in this stuff and you get to opening your spirit up to all kind of spirits and all kind of wickedness. Yeah. Amen. That, that's why you don't ever in your mind go think about playing no Ouija board. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. Ouija boards are demonic. Right. Tarot cards are demonic. Right. Amen. Amen. Fortune telling is demonic. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to be very careful to what you listen to and what you watch and what you read. But we get over to the house and, you know, you would have saw on a, just a, a casual appearance and you thought, ain't nothing wrong. And we start having prayer. When you start having prayer and you start saying the name of Jesus, you stir up stuff. And we start praying. And as we were praying, that, that, that young lady started laughing. And that spirit started speaking. She starts speaking through that young lady. And she starts saying, I just laugh. You ain't got the patience. I mean, she starts saying all kinds of things. And see, I don't just spend and waste time talking to devils. Right. I said, shut up. I, now, I don't tell people to shut up. 
And don't go around telling nobody to shut up. <laughs> we talking about households, wives, don't go telling your husbands to shut up. Right. Amen. Husbands, don't go telling your wives to shut up. Right. Shut up. I'm the man in the house. You might get the five-fold ministry. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 We 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 on this household thing. We gotta we gotta learn learn how to treat one another. Right. Amen. Husbands love your wives right. as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for it. Right. Amen. 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 But here it is. She starts speaking all this crazy stuff. I said, shut up. And I just start saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and in the name of Jesus, it starts saying, and she just fell down on her knees. She started weeping and crying. The Spirit of God moved in that home, and God filled her with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I remember a time we was in Jacksonville, Jacksonville, North Carolina. I was before I got married. But my better half came. He to find the wife, find the good thing. Right. Amen. Let me tell you what this word will do. The word is so powerful. It'll transform your life. It, 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 will, it will show you things that you, you wouldn't be able to see with your natural eye. That's why I love him. I'm, I'm living in, let me just, I'm living in Jacksonville, North Carolina. My wife, at the time, I didn't know, I had never met her, I had never seen her. She in Dayton, Ohio. I go to my, my barracks, my room, after Wednesday night service and just had a little talk with Jesus. And I, I, I declared to God that night, I said, God, I want you to know tonight, I'm going to live for you with or without a wife. I said, but God, you know my heart. <laughs> I'm telling you what happened that night. See, this is what the gospel will do. When you, when you start believing the word and trusting the word and obeying the word, I'm praying in Jacksonville, North Carolina. My wife and they know I. I ain't seen her. I don't know her. I'm praying. I said, but God, you know my heart. I said, God, if you give me a wife, this is what I want. I put my application in. <laughs> I ain't just say give me no wife. <laughs> I mean, I got descriptive. Amen. Amen. Shape, hair, Amen. everything. Amen. I made my request known. That's right. And while I'm praying, you can think what you want to think about prayer. Man, God has done so much for us and letting us know what he can do through the power of prayer. See, what I've come to believe and know is that, that either people are going to like prayer and like this church or they ain't going to like this church because we pray too much. That's right. That's right. That's right. God shows me her. She in Dayton. I'm in North Carolina. I see her clear as day. I said, God, why am I seeing her? God said, What are you praying about? I said, I said, Oh no, this, you know, <laughs> you know, I got real calm. I'm like, ain't no way. Ain't no way. I said, What you praying for? See, you better be careful what you pray for. He showed a clear as day. I'm thinking, wow, this is powerful. Yeah. That was September. Go home on leave December. Ain't think nothing about the prayer. Now, after it happened, about three days later, I kept constantly thinking about that prayer. Like, man, this is powerful. Yeah. You know, as time go by, some things just slip away. Get home on December. Had a friend of mine got locked up, got out of jail. He backslid and said, you going to church Sunday with me. Amen. You need to get your life right. Amen. Amen. See, you get to run in them streets, want to do what the world do, it'll get you in trouble. Amen. Amen. I got friends now either dead, locked up. Amen. Just a few of them got their right mind now. But drugs in the streets will mess you up. I said, tell, tell him to their drugs in the streets will mess you up. That's right. Hey, man, you'll come in looking like he did on that picture. <laughs> oh, but when the power of God get a hold of you. Oh, 
Uh, I see people now, they say, man, you looking good. I don't know, I'm living right, I'm saved. Oh man, I get so happy about God and the things of God. So happy, man, I ain't smoked no dope in over 30 years. You think I ain't gonna get happy about that? Over 30 years, I ain't snorted no cocaine. Over 30 years, I ain't drank no beer, no liquor. Over 30 years, I ain't went to no club. And I love it. We had a preacher come here one time. He said, man, I, I, no, I'm glad God saved you. Because <laughs> you praising God like this, ain't no telling what you were doing up in that club. <laughs> I'm just dancing with a different partner now. <laughs> Hallelujah. But here it is. I get home on, in December. My friend with me. We get to church. We sitting in the back. Because he it just come out of prison and want him to feel uncomfortable. Man, I said, I gotta get up front where the action is. I can't sit in the back. We get to the front, make a long story short. We sit down. Three minutes after we sit down. Man, the finest thing, walked up in that church and stood at the end of that aisle where I was standing there sitting. And I looked up, I said, whoa. <laughs> 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 I just mesmerized. <laughs> And I, I, said, I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> and at the same time, we said, praise the Lord one to another. You know, you know she, I think she was mesmerized too. Baby. <laughs> she said, praise the Lord. We said, praise the Lord. We still trying to stay spiritual. <laughs> See, a lot of you brothers come up in church, you can't stay spiritual. <laughs> Everything walk up into you. Come on now. And I looked. I looked. I said, man, I just seen her somewhere before. And I looked back. I told my friend, I said, Mark, I said, I just seen her somewhere before. And I'm like, where did I see her from? I'm like, I got here. I flew in on Thursday. I didn't go nowhere Friday. Saw Mark Sunday, Saturday. We had church on Sunday. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, you remember you were praying back in September? Yes, she is. I couldn't stay focused the rest of the service. I'm like, God, this is my prayer. And so I have the church. I go to my mom. I said, Mom. And, and we, I mean, we come out of a big church. I mean, three, four hundred people. I said, I said, Mom, who is that? I said, who is that sister? I mean, does she just, that sister that just praising the Lord, that praise the Lord all through church. See, because that was one of my requests. I said, God, you give me a wife, don't give me no deadhead. <laughs> don't give me no prima donna. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. I said, I want a woman who how to pray God. That's right. Know how to praise God. And I said, my who is? She said, I don't know, but they call her Sister Faithful. I said, and I, and I, I said this. I said, man, I really admire the way she worshiped. And my mother ran with that. <laughs> Went and told her <laughs> what I said. Get home, my mom said, oh, by the way, her name is uh, Lisa. I told her what you said. I'm like, Mom, what are you doing? And she said, matter of fact, she would have rather heard it from you. <laughs> she told my mom that. And when she said it, she was like, oh my, why did I say that? She know why she said it. <laughs> she don't know why she said it. So I had every intention to go to another church that evening, but I made it my mind going back tonight because I got to rectify this thing. I got to her know I was trying to send my mom over here to tell you how I admired your worship. Right. Right. So I wanted to let it be known. Right, right. Now I just got in the church now. 
See, brothers, when you get up in the church, there's stuff still in you that got to come out of you. Right, right, right. Amen. Amen. You know, people come up in the church and they don't realize that player still in them. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen, brothers. You got to make sure that player ain't still in you. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because she ain't looking for no player. She looking for a man that know how to pray. That's right. That's right. And so I come fix this thing. I said, hey, man, you know, I just got into church. How's it going? I really admire your worship. And, you know, and I, I don't have no friends in the church. I mean, you got to, you know, I came from hustlers. <laughs> All my friends were big time bona fide hustlers. Right. Hey, man, they were making big money. Fine cars, fine houses, fine apartments. Right. Amen. Amen. It, it was it was nothing to drop five, six grand on a weekend. Oh, I want to put a sound system in my car. Let's go put 10 grand in it. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of people I'm running with. Mm -hmm. So I get in the church and, you know, that, that mentality was still in me. Mm -hmm. We talk and I said, oh, matter of fact, I don't have no friends in the church. And, 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 and I said, by the way, here my number. Why don't you give me a call? <laughs> she said, I'm going to take guys' numbers. <laughs> I was like, woo. <laughs> that was a good thing. Right. Right. So let me run out and give out your number. Everybody, oh, give me a call. Just run around and give me, give me my number. That's right. Ladies, don't do that. That's right. Young ladies, don't do that. Don't get that desperate. That's right. Because you might give your number out to a crazy man. That's right. She said, here, here my number, you can call me. I thought, how dare her? <laughs> and I left. I said, I ain't called me for two days. <laughs> I, God was working on me. He was transforming me. But I thank God she stood her ground. Amen. Make a long story short. We met in December, married in April. And I, I don't, I don't, I'm just, I don't advise nobody to meet nobody in April and marry them in meet them in excuse me, meet them in December, marry them in April. I'm telling the folk now, get background check, right. pull a credit report, praise God. Right. Amen. Praise God, baby. Baby, let me see your bank account. <laughs> Amen. I ain't got no debt, baby. <laughs> got nine credit cards and you getting the 10th one to rob Peter to pay Paul. Right. Right. Amen. 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 When the Lord told me to marry, when the Lord told me to marry her, you better explore but not ignore. Amen. You, you better go see their family. How, how, how she treat her daddy? How he treat his mama? Amen. Boy, it got real quiet up in here. Amen. Because you want to know, is he going to love you like Christ loved the church? Amen. Amen. Well, I can't when he get in the church, then I'll marry him. Well, that's good. But you better make sure the church in him. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 You don't want to marry some hard head, don't want to listen to you. That's right. Amen. 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 Me and we can be real hard head at times. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 You know, it's okay to listen to your wise men. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm the man. Praise God. Ain't she never said it, but me. I'm gonna do this. Did you did you pray about it? No, but I'm gonna do it. I got it, babe. It's like one time we had a young lady in our church, she came past. I got a car, I got a car! I rejoice with you. Praise God. How did you get it? I just went to the car lot and they put the application in front of me. I signed it. I said, do you know how much interest rate is? No. Interest rate? What is the interest rate? I said, you don't know what your APR is? What is an APR? They just told me I was approved. I said, where the paper? I think it's in the car. She said, I'll go get it for you. She came and showed me the paper. I looked at it. She had signed a car note for a 27% interest rate. Oh, no. <laughs> I 
was trying to say, so you might want to take that car back. Because you're going to pay that car five times plus more. Right, right. See, in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. Right. Amen. 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 Somebody said, why did he say all that? Because we got to protect the household. Right, that's right. Amen. Wives, you got to listen to your husbands. Husbands, you got to listen to your wives. Right. It's a team effort. That's right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I, hear, I hear somebody already saying, I thought he was talking about the power of the gospel. <laughs> it is the power of the gospel. This word power in the, in the Greek, it, it means dunamis. It means dunamis. It's where we greet, get our English word dynamite. I'm telling you, the power of God is powerful. It is explosive. It, it can fix things, tear up things. It can break things. Hey Amen. I'm telling you, it is life changing. And if you have not obeyed the gospel, I don't know what you waiting on. Amen. 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 And I don't know what you waiting on. The only regret I did not have, I had, I had is, is I didn't get in this thing a, a whole lot earlier. Right, right. Man, if I would have knew what I knew when I was in high school, man, I would have turned that high school upside down. Right, right. right. I would have turned it upside down. Right. I wouldn't have been going up in there with a briefcase with marijuana up in it. Right. 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 I would have went up in there with Bibles. <laughs> studies in the cafeteria right. laying hands on people right. amen. amen this thing is real the power of God is real it is life changing right. I never forget one time I'm, I'm just giving you some testimonies I was on, on, in the Navy I spent 14 years in the Navy amen Navy stands for never again volunteer yourself <laughs> but I never get on the ship one time we was out to sea and, and I was preaching and teaching the Bible study to this young man. And I said, you want the Holy Ghost? And we got to talk about the Holy Ghost. He said, the Holy Ghost. And I started telling him about the Holy Ghost and signs and when people get the Holy Ghost. He said, man, I got an auntie. I go over her house and she started praying. She go in that room and man, she be saying some stuff I ain't never heard before. He said, I know it's real. I said, you believe in the Holy Ghost? He said, yeah, I believe in the Holy Ghost. I said, you want the Holy Ghost? He said, yeah, I want the Holy Ghost. I said, you don't want the Holy Ghost. I, I really wanted to see how much he really wanted it. Right. He said, I really want it. I said, okay, you really want it. Let's go down to the bottom of the ship. And we're going to pray for the Holy Ghost. He got down to the bottom of the ship. And as we were going down, I said, you don't want the Holy Ghost. Because I was trying to pull his bluff card. Mm -hmm. He said, I really want it. I want the Spirit of God. I want what my aunt has. I want to do what she do in that, that, that room when she starts praying. I said, let's go down to the bottom of the ship. We down, went down to the bottom of the ship. I said, lift your hands. God is my witness. I said, lift your hands and begin to worship God. Begin to praise God. God is my witness. He lifted his hands and started saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And on the third, thank you, God. Fit him with the Holy Ghost. He started speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God did God is my witness. This thing is real. It is life changing. And if you've never accepted the gospel, I don't know what you waiting on. I don't know what you putting off. Or putting off four. This thing is real. It is life changing. Amen. 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 It has healed my body. Touched my mind. Amen. Amen. When the doctors told my wife. It's either you or the baby. One not going to survive. But we start calling on the name of Jesus. Amen. And to this day our son 28 years old. Praise God. Amen. When they said he wasn't going to make it. When they said either you or the baby going to make it, somebody not going to make it. Thank God they're still here today. Praise God. Over 28 years ago. Amen. He's a miracle worker. This gospel works. It works. But you got to accept it. You got to believe it. You got to apply it. Amen. He said, I've come to jail. I have life. And have life more abundantly. I want to share a truth with you that Peter shared. And I won't be much longer. Before I read, though, let me read Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Because Jesus is the only saving name given to man by which we can be saved. Jesus. Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's right. The Amplifier says it this way. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among people 
by which we must be saved. For God has provided the world no alternative for salvation. There is no alternative for salvation. Jesus is the answer. Amen. And society proclaims that God, the Bible, are weak when compared to the intellect of the minds of people today. Mm -mm. Amen. But Paul declared the foolishness proceed of God is much stronger than the wisest of men. I thank God for his power. Amen. I said, I thank God for his power. Amen. Amen. Have you obeyed the gospel? Have you obeyed the gospel? Are you doing what you want to do? Let me tell you something. Doing what you want to do will get you in the wrong place. Right. And you'll start doing the wrong things. Right. Amen. Amen. But you'll come to a place where God will start dealing with you right. about decisions you got to make. But we got to obey the gospel. Yes. Amen. Yes. There's come, see, obeying the gospel is our ticket out of here. That's right. Jesus said, many going to come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? We prophesied in your name. We cast out devils in your name. He said, depart away from me, you workers of iniquity. Right. I never knew you. Yes. Amen. Amen. When I get before him, I want to hear him say, well done, yes. thou good and faithful servant. That's right. I'm telling you, do not reject the gospel. Amen. Do not reject the word of God. It is powerful. It is powerful. Peter shared the truth that I want to share with you in Acts chapter 2, verse 32, verse 37, excuse me. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Look what it says here. It says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. He said, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. We got to save ourselves. Yeah, right. I can't save you and you can't save me. That's right. But we got to save ourselves. Yeah, that's right. And saving ourselves starts with obeying the gospel. And look at verse 41. It says, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. When they heard the gospel, they responded. Let me tell you something about the gospel. When you hear it, it puts you in a place where you got to make a decision. You got to make a decision. What, I'm going, what am I going to do with what I heard? I said, what am I going to do with what I heard? I can remember going to church service after service, sitting in the church service. Mind not right, thoughts not right. People come to church with all kinds of stuff going on in their life. I mean, I was going to church high as a kite. I sat in the church Parking. See, this is what the world will do. It'll mess your mind up. I sat in the church parking lot, rolling joints, getting high. Before going to church. But I kept hearing the word of God and I kept hearing the truth of God's word. And it made me get to a place. I got to make a decision. Right. Am I going to keep doing what I want to do? Or am I going to do what God wants me to do? Right. Little did I know God had a purpose for my life. See, God has a purpose for every one of us here in this place today. That's right. But it, it starts with you obeying the gospel. Is everything going to make sense? No. It will not make sense. I mean, I'm in the Navy 14 years and God said, get out. Get out. That don't make sense, God. There will, there will be things God will tell you to do that won't make no sense to you. That's right. But in you doing what he tells you to do, I can honestly tell and I can't go into details, but I will tell you this. God will tell you stuff and he will come through with what he told you. There's stuff God told me 22 years ago that if I do certain things, he was going to blow my mind. Give me more than I ever did, would think about. And even today, I'm seeing it come to pass. But I had to wait 22 years to see God begin to unfold what he promised he would do in my life. I'm telling you, he'll do it. But see, God has to see that you are really sold out to live for him. 
See, I'm not living for God because of what he can put in my pocket. I'm not living for God for what he can do in my life. I'm living for God because I want to be saved. I'm living for God because I don't want to go back out there in that world. I'm living for God because I do not want to go back there out in the streets. But there I'm talking about things he said to us 22 years ago. We're now seeing it come to pass. He told us 22 years ago to get out and come to Charlotte to start a church. We had not a living soul in the church. My son would come out and say, Ma, I think dad crazy. Because he's preaching in this hotel room and he's preaching and there's nobody in the room. That dude look foolish, doesn't he? Yeah. Be preaching, setting up for church, going through the whole service and, and there's nobody there. But we knew God told us to do it. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something about living for God. There are going to be a whole lot of highs. But there are going to be a whole lot of lows. Yes. Right. And you got to get your mind made up. When you get in the lows, I'm going to live for him. Right. I'm going to serve him. Yes. I'm not going to turn my back on him. I'm not going to run away from him. I'm going to keep loving him. I'm going to keep loving him. I'm going to keep loving him. I'm going to keep serving him. Because God, you said it and you don't come true for me. Amen. Proverbs 15, 14. Let's all sing. The heart of him that have understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouths of food feedeth on foolishness. Proverbs 19, 3. The foolishness of man perverted his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. I want you to lift your hands with me right now, wherever you are. God speaking to us. He's touching the hearts and minds of individuals. It's time, some of us, that we just stop rejecting the word of God. We start accepting it. We start believing it. Is it all going to make sense? No. That's why he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Oh, come on. In the name of Jesus, right where you at, just lift your hands. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your